tend to fail when the husband is only visible from the waist down. More tea, please. Oh, you mustn't say things to me like that. I'm a married woman. <laughs> Two lumps. <laughs> we both are. You had a good stir this time, Rob. I've been stirring his tea. They don't write love stories like that anymore. <laughs> we changed our marmalade. No, but why don't we? And to hell with what the neighbours say. <laughs> Your tea. <laughs> There's a ring round the calendar. Why don't you answer it? <laughs> Not the doorbell, the calendar. You've put a ring round Friday. It says PM, afternoon. What's happening Friday afternoon? Well, if you want a rough scenario, what's going to happen is something like this. A, you will order me to do something. Or do you too? B, I shall do it. C, you'll tell me I've done it wrong. Why is that happening on Friday afternoon? Because it happens on Monday afternoon, Tuesday afternoon, <laughs> Wednesday afternoon, etc. Oh, I see. It's your little joke. No, it's not my little joke. Well, to be honest, old thing, it's not a very big joke, is it? <laughs> I mean, to tell you the truth, it, it, it lacks a punchline. You should try the short, crisp Now joke. you're telling me that my jokes are wrong. Well, you mustn't take these things personally, Aileen. No, I'm not blaming you for not being able to tell a joke. It's widely known that women have no sense of humour. <laughs> I'm a very understanding sort of chap. I don't expect you to be funny. On the other hand, I do... Hello, where's she gone? <laughs> That's funny. Aileen was behaving very strangely at breakfast time this morning. Aileen? Mrs. Potter. Oh, that Aileen. <laughs> In a mood, wasn't she? Yes. Female sort of mood. Mm. That woman's convinced herself somehow that we haven't got the ideal marriage. After all you've done for her. Yes, I know. It's the damned ingratitude that gets you. Change just the same. Really? Yeah, nothing to worry about. On our own heads, really. Serves us right for spoiling them. <laughs> we do in the West, you know. Out East, they get more stick. <laughs> the wisdom of the East, eh? Right. There's a lot to be said for the wogs, you know. <laughs> oh, you liked it out there. I loved it. I used to like coloured people before it became compulsory. <laughs> of course, there's no place like England. Fine. You think wives would be happy just being married to an Englishman? <laughs> Damn it, when you think of some of the nationalities they could be hitched up to. Not a pleasant thought, is it? Oh, it makes the blood boil. To think of Aileen in the hands of some... some Scandinavian. Blue movies and raw fish. <laughs> Diet's there for a decent little woman. Well, all I can say, Padre, is if she can't enjoy being married to me, what can she enjoy? <laughs> you see my problem? Absolutely. 
What do you suggest? For this, you're number eight. You're probably right. Yes, damned hard lines. <laughs> we ought to hide and have a peep at this. Might be amusing. <laughs> You're supposed to keep your eye on the ball! Yeah, it went in a sand pit, didn't it? It's not a sand pit. It's a bunker. Yeah, well, it's got your ball in it. <laughs> Looks an odd type. Yeah. Funny how some people's sense of dress goes completely haywire when they turn out for golf. <laughs> yes, I've noticed that. Good Lord. It's Harry Toombs, the gangster. What? What, is he one? Retired, so they tell me. Oh, so I should hope. How does a chap like that get into the club? By waving his fat wallet, I should think. <laughs> Hey, you're all in the sand pit. <coughs> Go and stand over there, see if anyone's coming. <coughs> I saw that. Blow him in there. Bad form's on. Oh, God's truth. Return that ball, sir. Listen, Bush, there's no need to raise our voices. We can settle this quietly. You should be in the bunker, sir. Well, I'm bound to be in a bunker, aren't I? If you make these things the size of a small quarry. <laughs> hey. Oh, uh, listen, I can't stop now. My man over there tells me I'm wanted on the telephone. That's right, isn't it? What? I'm wanted on the blower. What? <laughs> the blower! Very odd type. Left his footprints all over the sand. <laughs> Perhaps if he's new to the parish, I ought to visit him. He could do with one or two lessons read to him. Uh, don't suppose he comes much to church. Don't think we've ever had a gangster before. You had that estate agent. What happened to him? Lives in Spain or somewhere equally ridiculous. Can't say I ever liked the man. He could never look you in the face. Had semi-detached eyes. <laughs> I suppose there's something terribly Freudian about having to cheat when you're in a bunker. Wouldn't be surprised. About what? What? <laughs> about what wouldn't you be surprised? Oh, about there being something terribly Freudian about having to cheat if you're in a bunker. Oh. Yeah, well, there you are, I think. I suppose I came at him a bit strong. I was in a fighting mood anyway. I just read my newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> that can do it. I've cancelled mine. I just take the field and horse and hound. <laughs> Not the subject matter of the paper, which is so infuriating. I mean, I've got used to the fact that the world has deteriorated since it's no longer ruled by Great Britain. <laughs> <laughs> no, the most irritating thing about a newspaper is the suspense. Will they print it? <laughs> Will they be able to rush off a few copies while the trade unions are having a meeting? <laughs> What will the customer have to do without? Again. You wouldn't think that a congregation of nine elderly people could tarnish your brass, sir. <laughs> Why can't they get together in this country, management and labor? I mean, look at the great thing they've got in common. This staggering inefficiency. <laughs> Last week I had ten. Ten what? People in the congregation. <laughs> should have formed them into a union. <laughs> you found yourself with three for every one that you could manage before. Oh, it's no good. I can't move any more of those old gravestones. The wheels come off my barrow. <laughs> good grief, woman. You've only had it since Christmas. I know. 
I remember I was hoping for something a little more ladylike. Well, we can't afford a ride-on mower. I didn't want a ride-on mower. It'd be nice to have had a bottle of perfume, a string of pearls, <laughs> or even a set of free underwear. <laughs> <laughs> For a woman so nimble on her feet, she's remarkably heavy-handed with her equipment. <laughs> Thank you for the old fulfitter, Rob. Why not? It's very good of you to lend a hand like this, Redvers. I'm afraid the old church needs a bit of care and affection. I want to get after the men with the money, Padre. Oh, oh. Screw a few quid out of the unbelievers. Sense of power up here, don't you? <laughs> oh, yes, heady stuff. Have to keep a tight rein on the old sermons. Some of the younger chaps, quite irresponsible. Before you know where you are, they've got a congregation all heated up. And then going out onto the streets in a state of near enthusiasm. Don't like the sound of that. <laughs> Very sinister. I haven't much sympathy with the modern notion the truth has been superseded by the sound of a mob in the streets. Quite. One of the glories of Anglicanism is that we have been able, by and large, to preserve our faith in a manner that's decently boring. <laughs> Very rare virtue these days, boredom. But it's what the world needs more than anything. Half a century of sheer, unadulterated boredom. Perhaps you should have rung him up first. What, and have him wriggle out? No, no, no. Best to corner them at home. Eyeball to eyeball. That's the only way they'll ever get a checkbook out. But isn't he supposed to be in some kind of gangster? Is he likely to contribute, do you think, to the church restoration fund? Well, you're the treasurer, Toller. Up to you to find out. Decent place to graze an animal or two. I should think with all the spare bullets that are flying about this place from time to time, they'd get grazed all right. <laughs> <laughs> Had you go in there, didn't I, Tolly? Don't worry, you'll be all right. I doubt if he's a gangster, really, anyway. the fella doing? Destroying the evidence. Nonsense. We've all had the impulse to do that. Every part of political broadcast, come on. <laughs> Even if he was a gangster, he'd be a certainty for a few quid for the church woodwork. Nobody takes a higher moral standpoint in public than gangsters. Look at the Russians. <laughs> Who is it, then? The vicar and senior officers of the Church Restoration Committee. We've come to see Mr. Gang... Mr. Toole. You want Moody Harry? What you want Moody Harry for? Moody Harry? Uh, Harry? I don't intend to stand here on the doorstep bending words with the domestics. Kindly inform your employer that Mr. Redvers Potter is here. We met on the golf course. Don't antagonise these people, Redvers. Oh, it's the only way to deal with that kind. <laughs> if the idea of offering violence is entering your impudent head, I feel it only fair to warn you that our secretary here is not only a younger and fitter man than the vicar and myself, but is also a very useful welterweight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get him to make the check out for cash if you can, Tom. <laughs> Pleasant enough now? Yes. Trees, you see. Beautiful. Spared no money on this place. Ah. Uh, uh.
Your tomb's out, Potter. That's far enough, Jack. Watch it. We're almost neighbours. I used to be Potter Mints, you know. Potter Mints, the Hotter Mints. <laughs> What's he on about? <laughs> Too small for the fuzz. <coughs> Listen, if you're from the Inland Revenue, Mush, you'll have to take it up with my accountants. Well, surely you remember me. We spoke briefly on the golf course. Yeah? Yeah. I noticed you sneaking a ball out of a bunker. Remember? So big deal. For moving a few inches, you have to come round with the vicar. <laughs> For moving one lousy ball, I'm going to be excommunicated. Could be the end of you socially, you know. I remember you. Yap, 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 yap. I never had such a rollicking. Still wondering whether or not to report you to the committee. If that should be necessary. <laughs> I don't think we need go that far. Listen, uh, sure we can straighten this out? Cobb, I'll do this a second, will you, Mush? Uh, <laughs> we're seeking a donation to the Church Restoration Fund. <laughs> Very nicely put, darling. <laughs> <laughs> We don't want the ready stranger hands in broad daylight, do we? I never know when the fuzz hasn't got me in his telephotos. I swear sometimes there's a bogey in every tree. They're practically nesting here. Frida! I'm in this door! You don't have to keep it locked against me, you big dollop! <laughs> Make me look in front of people. I'm only supposed to be the squire around here, that's all. Can't get into my own steaming drum. This is Frida. Yeah, well, the rest of it is unpronounceable. He is of Polish extraction. It's Fredakovich. Fredakovich. There's three gentlemen I've called for a bribe. Well, I know that, don't I? Oh, it's not a bribe. Oh, you'll have to excuse Frida's uncouth terminology. He's still a bit Polish. <laughs> what do you mean, three gentlemen? I showed one in the library, didn't I? And this is the gentleman what I showed in the library. Showed? Showed? <laughs> All right, Tully, don't make a fuss. Mr. Toombs is just about to give you a very nice donation. Oh. I say, that's... Uh... That's very nice work. Don't touch the aeroplane! Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> the hours I put in on that plane. Have you finished with a television, boss? Yeah, it's out in the garden, isn't it? <laughs> you go and scrape it up. It gets so friggin' boring watching the bad guys lose all the time. <laughs> One hour. Why don't we all have a little drinky, eh? Oh, small one, thank you. <laughs> Vicar? Ah, that's very civil of you. Here we are. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> no, thank you. Well, what's he getting all moody about? <laughs> that he might have a drink with a reformed agnostic. <laughs> what is he anyway? Some sort of clinical CID? The rural dean in plain clothes, is he? <laughs> Listen, Mush. If it's good enough for the reverend gentleman to drink while he's in uniform, what's stopping you? It's uh, a little early for me, thank you. Oh, that's nice. That is very nice, that is. That makes the rest of us look like blotting paper. <laughs> Charming, that is. This is a drop of claret, boy. Not your old cleaning fluid. Cheers. Good health <clears throat> to the donation. <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. I wish I had the social nerve for crap like that. <laughs> Fairly successful, little Bordeaux. Oh. Beautiful. I would say about five years old. More like uh, 11. Oh, I tell a lie. More like 11. <laughs> he's a game one, this is. Yeah, he's always... What's his name again? Potter. Potter. Oh, yeah. Well, you can't win them all, can you? Harry, are we going to 
ơi nào ơ rồi quỳ see what i mean that i take it was mrs toombs that was not mrs toombs and the way she's carrying on is not likely to be <laughs> Perhaps, um, perhaps we ought to be leaving. Ah, oh, now come on, sit down a bit, park yourselves. What's the hurry? I, I, I really ought to be getting back to the gallery. Oh, what's the matter with him? Mm. You won't take a drink? He's in a tearing hurry. What am I, an untouchable? Well, just a few minutes then. <laughs> what gallery? Pardon? Well, this gallery you've got to get back to. You've got some sort of uh, shooting gallery? No, no. Tully and his good lady are in antiques. Ah, lower, lower, low. Well, there's a bent occupation for you. Go! If I was to tell you the villains there are right this very moment, knocking together a few more early Georgian sideboards, it's worse than the motor train. <laughs> so we're in antiques, are we, old darling? And who gets to be secretary of the restoration fund? Surprise, surprise. I can assure you there's nothing like that. You're dead right, Mush, there's nothing to touch it. Well, you should know, Mr. Toombs. <coughs> After all, you've experienced life. I've never had life, Mush. <laughs> Five stretch top weight. <laughs> to bring a theological note into this discussion, what size of contribution were you considering, Mr. Toombs? Well, it could be a good one, but you caught me at the right time. One thing I've learned in the course of a long and successful career is always spread a little bread about where it'll do some good. Sounds very generous. And number two is always get yourself a good lawyer. Ah, oh, no. I could help you with that. Ah, but I've got all that sewn up very nicely. Thank you very much indeed. Down here. Hey, what about up there? Upstairs? Yeah. <laughs> Who's representing Mr. Toombs up there? I need a lawyer in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. All the way upstairs. Far as you can go. The attic. Not the attic, <laughs> Your department. I think Redvers means, um... Well done, Tolly. He's got it. <laughs> I think he's right. I believe in covering all the exits. I am now in the market for a number one first-class spiritual advisor. I've been getting these uh, dark dreams again lately, haven't I? Horrible. My doctor tells me I've got to take up these finicky little hobbies. Says it's good for the nerves. I have spent 213 Frustrating hours with this little plea. <laughs> but you know what I mean, Vicar. Have you tried taking a glass of stout last thing at night? Well, I keep threshing about all night, according to that bird of mine. I don't get any sleep at all. I'm sure we can come to a satisfactory arrangement. Why don't we uh, pop down to that little church of yours and see how best to spend some of my money? Oh, well, yes. Yeah. What's that? Pick it up, Tolly. Pick it up. seemed generous. It was only his temper was uncertain. All your fault, Ty. I know. Not only stood on his airplane, but you refused to drink with him. Things started to go, go downhill right from that moment on. You can't go about refusing people's hospitality. Well, you know I can't drink a lot. Well, you never will if you keep turning them down. <laughs> Persevere. Drink's a very tricky thing for a beginner. <laughs> I mean, Take the vicar's homemade wine. I wish somebody would. <laughs> Just about getting used to the taste of it when your legs have gone. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, you've tried my elderberry wine. Yeah. <laughs> you see, Tommy, drinking's like marriage. The more used to it you get, the less it inflames the senses. <laughs> Hello. 
I said. He wouldn't carry a grudge this far. I know. Of course not. I don't know. Remember what happened to Thomas Becket? <laughs> I wish you'd had that drink of his, Tolly. I could do with it now. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mr. Toombs. Ah! Well, we've gone off to a bad start back at the house, so uh, why don't we have a little drink and talk about the bribe? Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> the donation. Well, all I can offer everybody is some very peculiar elderberry wine. Really? Come on, oh, then. What are we waiting for? <laughs> And no refusing hospitality this time, Tully. Take your hat off. Tolly's fine, Diana. He's just been finding out how easy it is to raise money for a good cause. <laughs> Your husband's been a tower of strength, Mrs. Donovan. I'm colorized, Diana. George your sermon the other day. Really? Mm. Which one? Um, Sunday. <laughs> Which sermon? Oh, um, uh, the kingdom of God being likened unto a sheepdog trial. <laughs> Always admired a good working collie. Mm. <laughs> Very impressive in the pulpit, I thought. Kept him awake, at least. Quite, quite. We'd no idea you could whistle so well. <laughs> you going to the jumble sale? Not likely, no. Nor me, either. Seen one, you've seen them all. That's what I tell them all. <laughs> the women folk enjoy them, though. Yeah. Which is a good enough reason to avoid them. <laughs> Is Aileen going? <clears throat> well, uh, she's slowing down. <laughs> <laughs> None of us getting any younger, are we? <laughs> no, no, to the jumble set. No, I should <laughs> Oh, yes, of course she is, yes. <laughs> Try and stop her. Jane's just the same, likes to get there early, see if she can pick me up another jacket or something. <laughs> Are they any good? Quite frequently. <laughs> I wonder what Aileen's been doing. Most she's ever brought me was a damn silly thing for creasing your trousers with. <laughs> I wondered what had become of that. <laughs> What did you do with it? Put it back in the next jumble, sir. <laughs> I wonder who's got it now. Why well, shouldn't one of these things come round, you know? <laughs> the thing about marriage is... When you're feeling depressed, the little woman can be a great comfort. Mm. I find if I go and shout at her a bit, it bucks me up no end. 